Hey boys and girls, it's Mr. Giamini. Uh, I know I'm not here today, so I thought I'd just refresh your memory of what we kind of accomplished yesterday in class so that when you're doing your little assignment today with a friend, with a partner, you will remember how to do it as we discussed yesterday in class. So to begin with, we talked about prime factorization yesterday. Keyword here is prime, and we should remember our prime numbers are numbers that have only two factors, one and itself. So for example, two. Two is prime because the only factors of prime, the numbers I can multiply together to get to are one and two. Something like 11 is a prime number because the only, numbers I can, the only factors of 11 are one and 11. So prime, so we want to make all these numbers till they're prime and we want to use that doing their factors or factorization. And you guys probably remember this, we call them factor trees from way back when. So if I take a look at 66, I ask myself what times what equals 66? Well, I know six is even. So I could just take half of it, so that's 2 times hmm, two times 33. Now I look at either of these numbers, are they prime? One either is prime? Uh, 2 is prime. So the only factors of 2 are 1 and 2. I go to 33. Let's see, what are the factors of 33? Uh, 3 times 11. And both of those are prime, so I'm done. So the prime factorization of 66 would be 2 times 3 times 11. I go to the next one, 32. What is the prime factorization of 32? Well, I do know 4 times 8 is 32. Now, right now, neither of those numbers are prime, so I must continue to break these into branches. I go 2 times 2 is 4. There's the prime factorization of 4. I go, let's see here, 2 times, hmm, what is 2 times, 2 times 4 is 32? Or, I'm sorry, 2 times 4 is 8, my fault. I know that's 2. Break this down, what times what is 4, 2 times 2. So, prime factorization of 32 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, 2. I could also write that as 2 to the 5th power. But for what we're doing, it might be easier to set it up like this. Now I go to 40. What times what is 40? Hmm. I go 2 times 20. Okay. Two's prime. 20, I go 4 times 5. Well, 5 is prime because it only has two factors. And then I go 2 times 2, 4, 4. And I'll circle those. So prime factorization of 40 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. Now, or I could also write this as 2 to the third times 5. So I take a look now. I say, what factors do all of these have in common? Well, I'll go over here. 66 has an 11, but nothing else has 11, so I'll cross that out. Uh, I go here, 40 has a 5, but none of the other ones have a 5. I go back to 66, well, 66 has a 3, but nothing else has a 3. Now, I see all of them have a 2 in common. Now, the problem is they don't all have the same amount of 2s in common. I see 66 has 1 2, I see 32 has 5 2s, I see 40 has 3 2s. Well, the number of twos that they all have in common is one. So the pri the the prime factor the, their greatest common factor is really two. So I eliminate those, I eliminate those, because the most number of twos that they all have in common is just one. Now, we talked about applying this then to a story problem. So let's take a look at this story problem. It says Mr. Jimini has thirty calculators, forty four geometry templates, and sixty protractors. He wants to have a group activity for the students where each group receives the same number of materials without any left over. How many groups can he form and how many calculators, templates, and protractors will each group receive? Well, first thing I do here is on identifying numbers. Thirty calculators, forty four geometry templates, let me actually circle these. Forty four templates, thirty calculators, and 60 protractors, and I want to have a group activity for the student where each group receives the same number of materials without any leftover. So no leftover, input is zero, nothing can be left over. How many groups, so how many groups can I form, and then how many calculators, templates, and protractors will each group receive. So let's first take 30, 44, and 60. And let's use prime factorization. So I'm going to find out the greatest common factor, the number that goes into all of them. Uh, so 30 would be 2 times 15, I'm guessing, because half of 30 is 15. And then I go 15 is 3 times 5. Okay, those are all prime. 
So the prime factorization of 30 is 2 times 3 times 5. The way I could check to see if I'm right, all these numbers are prime, and then I could say, hey, wait, 2 times 3 is 6, 6 times 5 is 30. Let's go to 44. What times what is 44? Uh, well, half of 44 is 22, so I'll just take it in half. All right? 2 is prime. What times what is 22? Uh, I think I would have... Uh, someone just told me 11 times 2, so I'll go 2 times 11. Both of those are prime. So, there's my three prime numbers. So, it's 2 times 2 times 11. This could also be written as 2 to the second power times 11. But for our purposes, we'll leave it as this. Okay, what times what is 60? Well, I'll go 6 times 10. What times what is 6? Uh, 3 times 2, there we go. Maggio's helping me out here. These are both prime, so I'll circle them both. Over here, what times what is 10? I think it's 2 times 5. And those are both prime. All right. So, taking a look, prime factorization of 60. 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. All right. Now, again, to check this, let's see. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 11, 44. Okay, so that does equal that. We're so good here. Uh, 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 5, I'll go, is 20. 20 times 3 is 60. Okay, so that works. Now, we have to find the factors that all three have in common. So let me change my colors here real quick. Let me go back to the blue. Uh, okay, this has a 5, this doesn't, this does. Well, not all of them have 5, so I can't use 5 as their greatest common factor. Oh, and I accidentally crossed out the 11 because none of them also have 11. Okay, 30 has a 3, 60 has a 3, but 44 does not, so I cannot use 3. Okay, now we go down to 2s. Well, this has 1, 2, this has 2, 2s, this has 2, 2s. Okay, so they all have twos in common, but what's the greatest amount or number of twos that they all have in common? Well, the greatest amount would be one, because this has two twos, this has two twos, this only has one. So the greatest amount that they all have in common would be one. So the greatest common factor for all of these would be two. Now, with that being said, it says how many groups can I form? Well, I can form two groups. Two groups. Now, how many items will I put in each of those groups so that I don't have any left over? Well, I have 30 calculators, so I'll divide 30 by how many groups I have. I have two, so I can have 15 calculators in each group. I'll abbreviate. Uh, I'm going to have two groups, so I'm going to divide 44 into two groups, so I can have, that is, gives me 22 templates in each group. And then I have 60, so 60 divided by 2. That gives me 30, so I can have 30 protractors in each group. So there's my answer. How many groups can I form without having anything left over? Well, I can have just two groups. In each group, I'll have 15 calculators, 22 templates, and 30 protractors. Okay? Hope this review helps you out in creating and also hopefully completing your assignment today. Have a great day. Bye.